guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the latest offerings from Hasbro as part of their Kenner, the real Ghostbusters reissues. Uh, so this was kind of a big one. A lot of folks were really excited about the fact that they brought back the Ecto-1. And I'm one of those people, so I'm actually really excited to jump in and check this out. Uh, but I've also got two of the ghosts that are being made available now, uh, which are actually two of my favorites from the Kenner line. We've got Fearsome Flush, and we've got the Bug Eye Ghost, which was my all-time favorite here. Um, so I want to start by talking about the packaging for all of these. Let me kind of move the Ecto-1 off to the side. Um, I want to talk about, first of all, I love that I can stand these up. <laughs> They've got these added pieces to the bottom of the bubbles that makes them stand up really nice here on my table. Um, but the packaging is beautiful. It's got a great retro vibe. Of course, it's modeled after the original Kenner packaging, but it's my understanding that they completely redid the artwork. So while this is not the exact same artwork from the vintage Kenner boxes, it was recreated in a way to look as close to that as possible to pay homage to it. Uh, but it's also a good thing for anybody out there who collects the vintage stuff, who doesn't want the new things mixed in and getting confused, um, because it does differ from that original packaging. So, flipping around to the back, you can also see we do have the big Hasbro logo on there, uh, which would also be a big giveaway for comparing it to the vintage. But they still did kind of like a vintage style cross-sell, only showing the three things that are in this current reissue wave, the two ghosts, the Ecto-1, but it also shows you the great little action feature call-outs. I don't know, I'm a big fan of the retro aesthetic, of course. If you guys follow my channel, you know that. I think these look really, really cool. Um, and then that uh, Ecto-1 box, I mean, come on, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Again, it does a good job of recreating that vintage artwork, but it is new artwork from my understanding. It has both the Kenner and the Hasbro logo right there on the front of the box. And then the back has got some actual images of the Ecto-1 vehicle showing off some of the play features. Um, I thought it would be really fun to just kind of open this up with you guys and we'll look at how it is to put it together. And then we'll get a closer look at the overall recreated vehicle and the ghost. So let's dive right in and do that. So there's really not a lot of assembly you have to do with this thing out of the box, which I was actually kind of surprised by. Uh, the entire vehicle comes right out of the box, already assembled. It's just wrapped in some tissue paper. Uh, but then we've got the little seat that we're going to plug onto the top. We've got the amazing little pack-in ghost, which were always, always my favorite parts of the original Kenner Ghostbusters line. we got some stickers that I'm going to put on here. And then we've got our instruction sheet which uh, shows you where the stickers go, but also shows you how the action feature works. So we'll go over that as well. Uh, okay, so this is the part where I'm gonna put the stickers on and hopefully I don't mess them up too bad. Ooh, I got a little too close to the top on this one, but that's still, it's still pretty smooth. It's a smooth sticker there. All right, we got one more No Ghost logo to put on the back. Oof, 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 oof. Uh, not as centered as I'd probably like. Ah, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. It's within the little circle there, so that's good. Okay, so we got this license plate sticker to put on the front. There we go. We've got the smaller one to put on the back. This one makes me nervous. And then we got this big windshield sticker. Why didn't they just make this a window? I mean, the answer for Hasbro, of course, is that they're doing it just like Kenner, but like, <laughs> and the obvious answer here is, oh, it's easier to just make it as one solid piece of plastic. It's cheaper that way. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is going to be crooked, isn't it? Oh, it's a little crooked. It's a little, I'm the worst. <laughs> and the last thing I got to do is clip the chair into the top. Boop. Hey, there we go. There's our Ecto. 
Okay, so let's talk about the Ecto here. Um, honestly, I am pretty impressed with this because this feels just like the original one. Um, it's got some weight to it. It feels like that same kind of solid plastic. Um, and that's always one of those things I'm very worried about with modern vehicles and even play sets is that so many of them these days are made of that lighter, thinner, just very cheap feeling plastic and i hate using the word cheap feeling but you guys know what i'm talking about it's usually just very very thin and flimsy compared to the heftier vehicles that we got in the 80s and even the 90s uh, but this feels just like those original ones i mean it feels nice and solid you can see uh, it looks like it's made the same way i don't know if they still had original molds for this thing, or if they had to, you know, remake new molds just by molding the actual Kenner one. But uh, this thing looks really, really nice. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find my vintage one to display. Look, I've packed a bunch of stuff up to move things around. I tried to find it. I didn't want to just dig too far to, to get it out. Uh, so I can't show these side by side. One thing I want to say about this though, like if you're looking for something new to display in your collection. The best thing about this is the fact that it's such a bright, pristine white, right? Because the vintage ones did have a tendency to get yellowed over time, like the plastic aged and they got very yellow. Um, also mine is missing a door, <laughs> my original one. So, you know, this is a nice way to get a good complete one to add to your collection. Uh, it does have the modern copyright information down here. Like it says Hasbro and everything. So it's one of those things where I know there's always the fear of these getting passed off as vintage and that's a real thing. Like I totally understand why that's a problem. That is a problem. So I'm glad that at least we've got stuff like that on there so that if you're in the know, you can look at this and know that this is not a vintage toy. So, you know, you can open up the doors. They actually have a really nice solid click there. I mean, look at that. Click, click. <laughs> so that works really nice. It rolls good. It's even got traction on the wheels. So you can kind of hear it <laughs> rolling across the hard surface there. And then we've got the fun little action feature back here as well. So I don't know if you guys even remember this on the vintage, but the muffler moves side to side. And this is how you lock and unlock the grapple that is on the inside here, which I'm going to show you. So you can open up the back door just like so and you can see we've got the cool little the cool little claw that's like there's a string that comes out of the base and then you can wrap it around this little hook at the top but you want to turn this to the left the muffler to the left and that's going to allow you to pull the little grappling hook out of the back you got the cool string there and then the whole point of this is to capture a ghost which is always so, I loved like the the features in these lines about how they captured ghosts, which didn't make any sense <laughs> when comparing to the show, but still it's fun. It's a fun play feature, right? So the, the little claw can grapple around the figure. You want to switch the muffler back to the right at this point, because then when you roll the car, which it's actually having a hard time doing on my acrylic surface here, but... For example, when I roll the wheels, you can see how the hook goes back in the vehicle. Now, it's supposed to, like, bring the ghost in, too. It's almost like it's not getting a strong enough grip around it. The claw's actually got a bit of a loose grip. I don't remember if that's how the vintage one was or not. Uh, let's see. Let's try it again. Come on, ghost. Get uh, there we go. I don't know. Can you see it? I better move to that. Here we go. Yeah, we captured as a ghost. Boom. We captured a ghost by just bringing him to the inside of the Ecto with the figures. So, yeah. Hey, there you go. This is a really nice reproduction vehicle. I like it quite a bit. I suppose this is important too, right? So here's a... This is actually a vintage. This is a vintage uh, Kenner Peter Bankman. But just to kind of show him standing with the Ecto-1 here. And then... We remove his proton pack. Let's open the door. Just to kind of show you guys. I mean, the fit should be the same. Let's see. Get 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 onto the get onto the steering wheel. There you go. There you go. Hey, alright. So there's uh there's what our figures look like inside the Ecto as well. Alright, we got the bug eye ghost and we got fearsome flush outside of their blister cards. And I just want to show these guys to you. Uh these are a ton of fun, honestly. Uh they do a really good job of looking like the vintage figures. Let me show you. So fearsome flush. He's so fun. Looks like an ordinary toilet, right? But he's got these wheels on the bottom, and when you roll them, blah, blah, 
just always really really loved this guy and then our bug eye ghost i just always thought he was one of the coolest designs even as a kid i loved this guy uh he's purple which is one of my favorite colors he's got a big giant eyeball which is one of my favorite action figure aesthetics um the idea here is that you would squeeze the body and it would pop the eye out now i can't really get this to do that. I was wondering if it's because I need to get it a little more airtight, but like you can see it's attached to this long kind of yellow string. So you can like slide the eyeball back in here and pop it into socket. So I just, I don't know. It's not really working. Now there's a couple things I want to point out here. Um, the body feels way softer than I remember the vintage one feeling. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do a comparison time? Look at that. I actually do have my vintage bug eye ghost right here. Uh, right off the bat, I can point out a huge difference. The eyeball, it's so much bigger on the new Hasbro version compared to the Kenner version. And the feel of the plastic is very different uh, because the new Hasbro one is much softer. This one is much more rigid, but I gotta be honest, uh, the bug eye popping feature never really worked on this uh, old one either. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just because it's older or something. Uh, maybe you guys <laughs> are better experienced with it. I don't know. I you know I don't remember even ever doing that feature a lot. I just always thought it was cool that this ghost had a big old giant eyeball. Um, but you can kind of see the similarities in the overall sculpts, but they are different. In fact, I do want to point out the back. Have you guys ever noticed this? Um, the back of this guy, the shape of his body actually has a devil in the mold. Look at this. There's like a big nose and a mouth and some eyes. And then the horns of the creature make this devil face. Yeah, it's actually very creepy. In fact, I remember this guy being kind of one of those uh, big ones being mentioned during the whole satanic panic era of the 80s. Yeah, that's that's totally there. So look, the Hasbro version still has it, but you can see that the sculpt is much softer on the new Hasbro one. It's not quite as detailed as the vintage one, and I think that's just because it's made of a softer plastic overall, but it's still there. They kept that extra detail in. Uh, overall, I mean, he's a very fun recreation very faithful but again he stands out he's got the hasbro copyrights on there as well so he stands out from the vintage so let's do that comparison time with fearsome flush so this is the new one over here on the left this is the vintage one from kenner you can see they work the same Blah. the colors are a bit different the new one is much more blue than the original one and look at the bottom the way that the wheels are set in there and the wheels themselves, they're completely different. So again, it's another way that these stand out from the vintage. It's almost like Hasbro just totally recreated these guys and that's probably good. Um, so you can see copyrights are totally different. The original one's got a copyright on the side that says 1989 Columbia Pictures. The Hasbro one's got a 2021 Hasbro copyright on the bottom. Um, so they do stand out, but they look great. I mean, the new one, Still a really good recreation. I will say the eyeballs, a little bit more detailed on the vintage, especially that purple brow coming over them. Um, but the colors are brighter on the new one. So yeah, it's still a really great recreation. Action feature, man, it's so great on this one. All right, so hey, there you guys go. There is my look at the new Bug Eye Ghost, Fearsome Flush, and the Ecto-1, Hasbro's homage to the original Kenner Ghostbusters line. One of my personal all-time favorite toy lines. I loved it a lot as a kid. And I think it's really cool that Hasbro's doing this, but, but, here's the big but with this. Ugh, they're Walmart exclusives. And you guys might've already seen my video when the original figures came out and the hassle I had to go through to get those. And now they're just like clogging the pegs and falling off the shelves at Walmart. I kind of hope the same thing happens with these, honestly, because the same shenanigans happened with the Walmart pre-orders on these. I've been getting flooded with pictures on social media with Walmart shipping these with bent cards and everything, and I hate it. I hate it so much. So I really hope that these are going to be uh, as readily available in the stores as the figures were with some time, because getting the stuff off of Walmart's website is a total gamble, and it's just the absolute worst. It makes collecting something like this, which should be a fun, nostalgic throw back just totally annoying and aggravating so ug ug to the walmart exclusivity of these but if you can get your hands on them if you can find them 
I think they're great. I think they're totally worth the money. Again, this Ecto-1 is awesome. It's a great display piece for your collection to repl replace maybe a busted vintage one. Uh, same with the box that it comes with. I think that's pretty awesome. So hopefully... Hopefully, everybody that wants these will be able to get these. And without bent cards, Walmart, gosh!